the old work-life balance, if you will. Yeah. So I'm broadcasting from my alma mater's football stadium. That's Oklahoma State. Cowboys rank 17th in the country. And across the street in the exact same dorm, I first, the only dorm I actually occupied at Oklahoma State, 1997, my daughter Harper is moving in. So I lugged up and down the stairs two or three times, worked myself up a little flop sweat. And uh, Harper's getting ready for her first night college. And uh, it's pretty cool stuff. And it's, it's weird, right? Like there's one of those moments where you're like, oh, well, now they're not here. But uh, she's the she's the one who's been kind of a quasi adult for a couple of years anyway. So uh, pretty fired up for her. But obviously, it's, it's just a different if you're in that span of life, you know, it's a weird thing. And then for life to come full circle and to be your and her mom's alma mater also really, really cool. And then just again, weird. Weird's a big word right now, and but this is a different kind of weird than the word in social media. Welcome in, Doug Outlink Show on Fox Sports Radio. There is a lot, a lot to get to. Um, you know, I I like this story because we've been talking about a lot the holdouts and the hold ins, and Brendan Ayuk um, continues to hold out, hold in, whatever. Uh, the Niners and the Steelers reportedly have the framework of a deal in place, but the 49ers are still trying to work out a deal for. Ayuk, right? It's the whole idea of like, look, you can go there and make a little bit more money or you can stay here and, you know, be successful. Um, here's George Kittle, his tight end on the wide receiver. No, it, it, it definitely is what it is. And it's never what it's not. But he brings up a great point. This is the old, um, for people who know in television, Jay Leno, right? Jay Leno famously famously would never take a night off. And his reason for never taking a night off is he didn't want anybody else to come in and do a better job than Jay Leno did. Right. Reading some cue cards, having some pregnant pauses, doing some interviews, talking about his fancy car collection. It's like, look, if I don't take a night off, then nobody can come in and show they're better than me. And I, I'm just, again, I'll be honest with you. Uh, that's kind of how I've always been wired. Like I'd love to look back and see how many days off in my life. I still have accrued. Because I don't take them off. Today's an example. Now, should be pointed out, today's a pretty special day. Ian O'Connor, who, uh, fantastic writer and, of course, author. He's written the, uh, was it, unauthorized biography of Aaron Rodgers. He's going to join us at half past the hour. So it's like one of those, like, didn't really want to take the day off because I want to talk to Ian about his process, the book, what, what Aaron said about it, uh, what we know, what we don't know. Like, I'd actually think, and I mean this, not just because we're having him on, if there's one current sports figure that we all know, but we don't know, and yet we're interested in what he's really like, and the fact that he didn't really contribute to the book, although he did answer some questions at some point after most of the book and sourcing was done, I think it's just perfect timing for Aaron Rodgers. Coming off an Achilles in New York, uh, the fact that, you know, he went to on his own personal vacation uh, instead of going to off-season training, like all of that stuff, the timing could not be better for a book and the person couldn't be better for a book that we want to learn more about than Aaron Rodgers because he's this not nefarious creature, but definitely a notorious um, kind of clandestine figure where, where people know he's dated a lot of women, but people don't know what makes him tick. And that's what this book, I believe, is mostly here to tell us, but not from, from a second and third person perspective, not from a first person perspective. But getting back to Ayuk, I mean, that's the reality of it. Like, if you don't practice for all of training camp, all it takes is for people to fall in love with their guys. And, oh yeah, by the way, that's, I think, the biggest issue with being traded to somewhere. Right, where the, the Pittsburgh Steelers sitting there going like, yeah, we have George Pickens. He may not live up to his athletic talent, and we have an issue at quarterback, but man, you know, I like this guy. I like that guy. I like the other guy. You end up loving the guys that you see. You see. You know? And then you start talking yourself into like, well, we keep him. It's going to cost us $30 million. We don't keep him. This guy costs us a million dollars. What are we even talking about? And I do think that uh, being Wally Pipped is too dated. And the truth is, Jay Stu, you and I discussed this before the show. Even saying you got blood sewed, even saying you got blood sewed is, uh, is an issue, right? Because 
Drew Bledsoe, when he got hurt and Tom Brady came in, that was 2001. That's 2001. It was the first game after 9-11. Um, and uh, was it Mo? Who was the linebacker for the Jets who hit him and knocked him into the next week? Knocked a, uh, knocked Bledsoe into next week. Mo, Mo, Mo. Mo Lewis. Mo Lewis hit him. But even to say, like, of course, Wally Pip was the guy who Lou Gehrig replaced. Lou Gehrig was the iron horse. Wally Pip never got his job back. You know, Mo Lewis. Now, again, this wasn't a holdout, but Mo Lewis knocked Drew Bledsoe into next week. Drew Bledsoe never got his job back. And the question becomes, the San Francisco 49ers sit there and go like, eh, we're fine. Because that's kind of where they are at quarterback. It'll be interesting to see what they do with Brock Purdy. Because at quarterback, I think they got to the point with Jimmy Garoppolo. Like, it's a lot of money. He's always hurt. We're fine. And whether you want to call it Drew Bledsoe or Wally Pipped or or whomever, or, you know, not, you know, not wanting to, you don't want to run the risk of somebody else performing your job better. I, by the way, I do that all the time when I'm off. I don't listen. I don't look at the comments. I know everybody's going to go, oh, he's better than your show. It, it's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. It's a motivator, but it's terrifying. But the holdouts, hold-ins, the, the least discussed part about it is, like, while you're holding out, or while you're holding in, somebody else is getting to run those same routes, and they're doing it for cheaper. Right? And we could sit there and go, like, why do you want to go cheaper? Who doesn't? When you put out a bid for something, you may not go to the lowest bidder, but you definitely go to a lower bidder. Why do you think so many of the things that we have are made overseas? Not because we don't like American workers. It's because, man, American workers and unions cost more. You know, it's the same thing with we call it ageism. But a lot of times people who are younger now, when they're younger, there's there, there's other issues that come with it. Lack of experience in both the workforce and in professional sports. Okay. Uh, you you don't know what the quality is going to be like when it really matters the most. Same thing when you're overseas and it's a factory and you don't have controls over those things. But there are some benefits and cost being a benefit, but also the chance to see and get opportunities and get reps, a massive benefit that Brandon Ayuk is uh, frankly donating to several young wide receivers from the Niners. So Gottlieb show here on Fox Sports Radio. We really got a really good show. Happy about it. Excited about it. Uh, by the way, C.D. Lambs wants Micah Pars wants a new contract. Micah Parsons, of course, talking about C.D. Lambs' money. That's a, it's kind of a thing as a no no. We, you do see the pattern here, right? Wide receivers wanting new contracts, holding out, holding in. Um, what, what is it? Comparison is the thief of joy, and yet all these wide receivers compare themselves to other wide receivers that have gotten paid. I just, um, Jason knows this. I tire, I tire of talking about contract extensions. Like you're under contract, okay? If you if you think you're going to get more money because you're holding out, like good luck to you. I, I no one wants to see anybody get hurt, especially non-contact stuff. But I'm telling you, I, I still think the best way to get paid is to threaten to hold out or to hold in, but go out there and perform and show that you're all in. Because once they see you and see how much better you are than the other guys around you, the more likely they are to pay you. But every year we have these holdouts, hold-ins. Le'Veon Bell was the last guy to hold out for a whole season. And that did not work out well for him. I wouldn't be scared at all if I was one of these teams.